Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to chapter 16. Remember, we're doing the survey of life. Uh, we're the survey, our strategy, our scheme is least complex to most complex. We've made our way, uh, we've talked about the prokaryotes, uh, bacteria, and archaea, and now we're talking about the eukaryotes. Within domain eukarya, there are plants, animals, and then these things called uh, plants, animals, fungi, and these things called protists. Uh, protists are protists because they don't belong to the other categories. They're too complicated to be bacteria, but not complicated enough to be plants, animals, or fungi. So uh, we talk about them in those categories, the ones that are most like plants, the ones that are most like animals, and the ones that are most like fungi. Right now we're talking about the ones that are most like plants, and the ones that are most like plants are algae. Um, our next group of algae are called pheophytes. Pheo means brown, phyte still means plant, so the name means uh, brown plant. These aren't plants, and again, I'm not sure if you can see in the picture very well, uh, this is kelp. Uh, this is giant kelp. Um, there are giant kelp forests um, off the coast of Northern California. Uh, kelp can be as long as 100 meters long. 100 meters. That's like longer than a football field. 100 meters is big, and we're talking about a protist. We're talking about things that's related to other things that are all unicellular. Um, seaweed, almost all seaweed uh, is uh, a phaophyte. It is a, an algae of some sort, if not directly a brown algae. These are the largest and most complicated of protists. This is not a plant. It is a protist. Um, you can see how it's related to plants, but it is not a plant. Why isn't it a plant? It's not a plant because it doesn't use the right chlorophylls, because it doesn't have roots, and because of uh, a few more things that I don't know. But it's not a plant. It is a protist. Our next group of algaes are the ones that are most like plants, and these are chlorophytes. Uh, these are the green algaes. Um, they are definitely the most plant-like. They use chlorophyll A and B. Um, most of them are free-living. Uh, some of them are symbionts. Um, let's talk about this concept because it'll make it'll be more important in a little bit. Free-living. Free-living specifically means not parasitic. We see here that green algae, that most of them are free-living. If we're saying most of them are free-living, what are we saying? We're saying, well, most of them are parasites. But what does that imply? That some of them are. Some of them are. Parasites. Parasitic algae? There are some parasitic algae. Uh, some of them are endosymbionts. Uh, we'll talk about that as we get further on, deeper into this topic. There are actually a lot. There are a lot of species of green algae that are live in symbiotic relationships. Let's talk about that concept of symbiotic relationships for just a second. I hope when I say that you imagine uh, two things living together for mutual benefit. Symbiosis. Um, that's not actually what it means. What it does mean is it means two things living together. It doesn't have to mean for mutual benefit. If it is specifically two things living together for mutual benefit, it's called mutualism. If both benefit from the relationship, it's called a mutualism. And that is what we're talking about here. And we're talking about being a symbiont. Um, there are giant clams that have algae that live in their flesh, and this is a mutualistic relationship. There are uh, every lichen. Every lichen has algae living in it. That's a mutualistic relationship. Um, we'll talk about a few others as we get there. Um, there are two other varieties of symbiosis. One is parasitism, not free living. Parasitism is where one member of the symbiosis benefits, but the other one is harmed. And any kind of a pathogen, any kind of a disease, 
pathogen is a symbiotic relationship, but it is a parasitic symbiotic relationship. And the last version, the last version of symbiosis is called commensalism. And commensalism is where one benefits and the other one isn't uh, impacted. Um, an example would be like, uh, have you ever seen those little fish that swim around underneath sharks? It looks like they attach to sharks. They're not parasites on the sharks. They don't hurt the shark at all. Uh, what they do, they're called remora. And what remora do is they hang out with the sharks. They use the sharks as a free ride. And they will sometimes eat off of the shark's kill. Sharks are messy eaters. There's garbage in floating around in the water around sharks all the time. And this is what the remoras eat. So the remoras are eating stuff the shark isn't going to eat. And they're not actually harming the shark. So that's a commensalistic relationship. Green algae. Chlorophytes. So remember, protists are protists because they don't fit in the other three categories. The other three categories being plants, animals, and fungi. Well, we just got done talking about the ones that are most like plants. Now let's talk about the ones that are most like animals. The ones that are most like animals are called protozoans. Zo means animal. Proto means early or first. Uh, so like a prototype is the early version of the thing. Not quite worked out, not quite totally functional. So protozoan means early animal, uh, and we'll kind of rearrange the definition a little bit and take it to mean similar to animals. How are they similar to animals? They're similar to animals in that they don't photosynthesize. They're similar to animals in that they are heterotrophs. They not they are not capable of making their own food, and they uh, have to consume other organisms or be parasites to be able to live. Our first, the rhizopods. Uh, rhizopods are uh, amoeba. You've probably heard of amoeba before. Amoeba are mostly free living, uh, but some of them are parasites. Uh, there's one specifically called uh, amoebic dysentery. Uh, the one responsible for amoebic dysentery. Um, dysentery is really a really really severe diarrhea. Um, Amoebic dysentery can cause mild discomfort, uh, sorry the picture's covering it, um, all the way to death. Amoebic dysentery can kill you. Diarrhea can kill you? Diarrhea actually kills more people than anything else on the planet. The way diarrhea kills you is through dehydration. Um, if you are pooping a lot, you're not reabsorbing water from, from the foods that you eat. If you're not absorbing that water, you're dehydrating. So, um, amoebic dysentery. Dysentery does not have to be amoebic, but the amoebic version is the worstest version, and it can, in fact, kill you. Next are foraminiferans. Um, let's break this word apart. Foram means whole. Foramin, mean means little or small. And fair means to bear or to possess. Like a ferry, a ferry boat bears you across the water. If you are riding in a taxi, what, it, are you, what does the taxi driver call you? He calls you his fair, as in the person that he's carrying. All right, so foraminiferin. Foram means whole. Emin means little. And fair means to bear, so little whole bears. Foraminiferins make a test. Again, a test is like a shell. Here's an example of a foraminiferin test that we see up here. It's got little holes in it. These are microscopic little critters. This is a picture right here of the White Cliffs of Dover. The White Cliffs of Dover are Dover, England. And it is a giant, 100 plus foot tall cliff face. Notice how they are all white. They're white because they are completely made of fossilized tests of foraminiferans. I'm not sure if you can tell, but here's a tugboat in the foreground. If I use this tugboat, and it's quite some distance away from the cliffs, if I use this tugboat of a frame of reference, we now get an idea for how big these cliffs are. How long? This was once the seabed which through 
uh, tectonic shift through earthquakes and whatnot got thrust up from the seafloor. How long did this have to be the bottom of the ocean for microscopic organisms, for their shells to have built up to the point to make a cliff 130 something feet tall? And the answer is a really, really, really long time.